call the meeting order. This is Rules and Open Government Committee meeting for <laughs> January 9th, 2013. Any changes to our agenda order? All right, let's go through the January 15th agenda then. Anything on page one? Page two or three? Page four or five. I want to come back and talk about the order in which we do those because we have some timing issues. Mayor? Yes. May I suggest moving item 3.6 to the consent calendar? I was thinking about deferring it a week or two. <laughs> no. Charter, Charter says we do it on this date, so I think oh. we'll do it on this date. That's the, uh, the vice mayor confirmation. I think, yeah, we can put that on the consent calendar. Uh, we need a, a sunshine waiver on the board and commission program work plan. Are we going to have a memo on that? Yes, I'm, hmm. it's drafted. I just need to get it all pretty and all well written. So that'll be out by when? Um, I should have it out by 3 o'clock Friday. That, that's my timeline. I'll, I'll have it done at 1 and my staff will have it posted by 3. Do we need it? To, <laughs> do we need to hear it on the 15th or can we do it on the 29th? We do not need to hear it on the 15th. I was not going to request a deferral because I know that this has been something that was important to everybody, but I can do it on the 29th. And then we wouldn't need a sunshine waiver because I'll have it done by then. Well, I, I personally prefer that just on the sunshine waivers. I'd like to limit them a little more to things that are time sensitive. Yeah, it, this isn't time sensitive. It's, it's basically a work plan and a timeline of when those items will happen. Um, it, it doesn't actually consolidate them. It gives us when that's going to happen and what we need to do. Mayor, are you concerned about too much, uh, too many items on the day? Well, that's just one issue. The other one is just you know trying to follow the, your uh, approach to sunshine, which is we don't do the waivers unless we really need to. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one question. But I think looking at the agenda, you know, it wouldn't hurt if it got get moved to the 29th either. So why don't we come back to that when we look at the rest of the agenda and, and see I, we don't have a, a draft agenda for the 29th, so I don't know how full that agenda might be. And can I just ask, I know that the email went out, but I didn't read it on my phone. How many applicants for the Appeals Hearing Board? Four. Four. Okay. So we have four people to interview for the Appeals Hearing Board, so that's roughly an hour yeah. on, on average. And we need a sunshine waiver on that because... We didn't get all of the responses the, quite in the time. The names out. Okay. Yes. Um, they've all been notified to that that would be the date, but we haven't given them a time certain yet. Okay, well, let's come back to the time certain okay. on that. That one, we also need a sunshine waiver. Although it's just the names of the people that aren't yes. out, it's not the, the fact we're doing it that's not out. And then we had some items from yesterday's meeting. Are those on this draft agenda? Yeah, 3.7 and 3.8. Okay. Anything else on page four or five? Page six or seven? Uh, note uh, item 11.2 of rezoning at Willow in South Bay. The applicants re requesting a deferral. Do we have a date? And is that okay with staff? I think you have to turn it on because you're the first. Thank you, uh, Lowell Prevetti, uh, Planning, Building, Code Enforcement. We do not have a date yet, um, but we should before Friday, so that way it can be published with the amended agenda. Okay. Staff doesn't have a problem with the, with the request? Not at all. Anything else on page six or seven? So, Mayor, that would leave us with one item of 12 single-family homes for an entire night agenda? No, no, I think you have to. And three ceremonial items. Do we have a choice? We always have a choice. When, when, no, the when was it noticed? Was it noticed for the evening? Yes, it was noticed for the evening, so it could be deferred to your next afternoon session on the 29th of January, if you wish, um, for the Springbrook project. Uh, the environmental community was the vocal uh, contingent that attended Planning Commission. Now that the project is proposing a 100-foot setback from the riparian area, I'm not sure if that level of community interest remains but uh, so it may be possible to do that one in the afternoon if it's the will of the rules committee 
we also had some ceremony items that we deferred from earlier meetings because we didn't have anything else on the evening agenda I think are those a couple of these here there are I think sharks yeah three items I think two of which were previously deferred off of an evening to an evening when is the next evening meeting we have 29th 26th of February 26th of February is the next evening meeting. I think we just go ahead and have the meeting it'll be short I have no other requests for additions or changes, so let's go back and, and look at the sequence and the timing of the afternoon. So, Mr. Mayor, as we're, yes. as we're talking about that, I'd like to request that item 3.5 be heard first after ceremonials, if that's our consent, if that's possible. That's the ordinance on uh, SB? The retirement. Or BR? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, you feel consent and then retirement. The mayor, you feel that uh, 3.4 should be not before a certain hour or something or last? Uh, the appeals hearing board interviews. It would be nice if we could give them a, at a time so they don't have to sit and wait because they can't even come into the council chambers and watch what's going on. Not before 3? Well, if we take up the. I don't see anything on the consent calendar. It's likely to take a lot of time. We have a couple of ceremonials. We should be done with consent calendar and ceremonials by two. If we take up the uh, SRBR ordinance, uh, it's hard to predict how long that might take. We have the boards and commission work plan, which we're going to think move off to the 29th. The city auditor's report. The service efforts and accomplishments report. We could take. Recycle plus billing customer service. Uh, so if we told them not before three, we'd certainly have enough stuff to take us to three o'clock. And then if we could start at three is, I think, the question. Probably. Or, or shortly thereafter. Would it be in a position where we could take them? The other option is we just do it a little bit later and clean up everything else. That's true. Uh, well, one question I had is, uh, Councilor Constant, your availability of uh, time on that day on the items that you have a particular interest in. So I believe that I'll be available between 2 to probably 4.30. 4 for sure, most likely 4.30. And I know you have the liaison to the appeals hearing board. Yeah. Three five three seven um, are the other ones that I have the most interest in. And three six, of course. That's going to be on the consent <laughs> calendar, so it'll be early. So I think if if we did three five and if it goes short we could handle three seven and then go right into the appeals board at three what i think would be better is we do the uh, srbr ordinance get consent calendar srb ordinance out of the way then probably take the recycle plus billing and customer service and that probably takes us to three do the appeals hearing board interviews mr mayor takes us to four yes uh, just to uh, enjoy the level of uh, complexity here, if uh, since Councilmember Constant asked 3.5 be heard uh, immediately after consent, um, and accommodating his schedule, I'd ask that 3.8 be heard immediately after 3.5. Yeah, I think we'll need a we may need a full voting council for for that item. Mm -hmm. And then if we are ahead of 3 o'clock, which I think is highly unlikely, we could take some of the other things to just take us up to 3, take the appeals interviews at 3. And so the service efforts and accomplishment report would come after that, I guess, probably. I, I don't know how long it's going to take. I can't remember. Last year, does anybody remember how long it took for the service, service efforts and accomplishments report? To, 
was some discussion. We were there. It, it was an interesting discussion. Sharon, do you remember short. how long it took to talk about? If I remember, we had just some wonderful compliments yeah. for our auditor and then an approval, which I'm sure we'll get the same this year. Sharon Erickson, City Auditor. It could take half an hour, but I can't imagine much more than that, but I can never predict. Um, a lot of um, senior staff may be there um, for this item, so if, if we have a, a time, some kind of a time frame, we could make sure that they're there in case there are any questions for them about the service levels in their specific departments. If not, work it out. Well, if we were to take that up around three and a half hour, then we could tell our appeals folks not before 3.30, and we'd have plenty of stuff to keep them. I don't want to keep the council waiting for a time certain, but if we said 3.30, that gives us maybe a half hour to get in the SEA report before that. Okay. Let's, let me see if I can uh, summarize this based on the discussion. We would have consent calendar and then take up item 3.5, the SRBR ordinance. Item 3.8, the Recycle Plus Billing and Customer Service. Then the uh, SEA report, which is 3.7. And then at 3.30, the uh, Appeals Hearing Board interviews. It gives us an hour to get that done. So the risk is we won't get to it and Council Constant won't be available for the, the entire thing. All right. Uh, I think that'll fill up the afternoon and the evening meeting we've already talked about. So do we need a sunshine waiver? We need a sunshine waiver on the appeals hearing board interviews to get the names out. Motion so to approve the agenda as amended, including the sunshine waivers. And the ad. And the addition of yet another commendation. Oh, we have a commendation. Never mind. No? No? Okay. So we're okay then. Anything else on that motion? All in favor? Aye. I, and I just want to make sure, confirm that you have the information for my teleattendance. I, we know that we have the teleconference you in. I've, we've got to get make sure we have the information so we can post it on the agenda. Okay. I, I sent and you we can hook you up by phone. Right. You sent it to me. I've already sent it to the agenda desk. Okay. Okay. There's no opposition to that, so that agenda is approved with the waivers, et cetera. Just let me know if you need anything else. All right. Upcoming study session agendas. We have no agendas to re review. We do want to talk about the topics for study session, and we'll get to those under item G4. So the next item would be legislative update. We have nothing from the state or federal. Meeting schedules, nothing at this point. The public record, anything from the public record the committee would like to pull for discussion? Motion note file. Second. We have a motion to note file. Martha O'Connell, you want to speak? Uh, yeah, I won't belabor the point that the uh, letter is pretty clear, just reiterating that a lot of these problems will go away if the support for the commissions is centralized in the city clerk's office and handled by people who know what they're doing. So I wouldn't have this extreme divergency in operations from commission to commission. Thank you. And Mayor? Yes, oh. Councilman Oliver. City Clerk, can you remind me, and whatever the council voted on, did that consider the consolidation of uh, everything through the clerk's office as far as scheduling and meeting notes and all that? The uh, Brown Act duties were, but that it was not clear to me it did not appear that they, looking at the motion, what was said, that they wanted all boards and commission staffing to be done by the city clerk's office, just the Brown Act postings, which we already do. Mm -hmm. So that was, that is not part of, it's part of my work plan as an option. Okay. Um, if this is how you wanted to do it, this is how we would implement it. But the first, the main thing is just consolidating everything. Um, my main recommendation is keeping the staffing as it is, and then in the future, like the next phase after that could be consolidating with the city clerk's office, but I did not uh, get that in the motion. Okay, thank you. That's very kind of I was just gonna kind of say the same thing. When we talk about the consolidation work plan, that'll be a great time for us to decide if we're gonna add all this together and wrap it right. up with a nice bow. Okay, uh, is there a motion on the public record? There is a motion on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed, public record noted and filed. Next item 
would be under category G recommendations of the early, early care and education commission reduce the number of seats on the commission from 13 to nine. The only question I had on this is, is there a reason this is out of sync with the boards and commissions consolidation and we're doing it now versus just wrapping it up when we do that? Hi, I'm Ann Kane, the interim library director. Um, I think at the time the request was made, which was back in October, that it wasn't clear exactly what the plan, the timeline was for the consolidation. and. It was an effort to make sure that there was a quorum. Um, since then, two new members have been added to that to that commission, um, but the commission is still asking that the number be reduced. Do you feel that, based on having the couple extra members, that they could exist until we wrap this up in Why? the future? Because I'm just concerned that we had all these moving parts with boards and commissions, and we kind of put a halt to everything, including only approving work plans for short durations so that we could keep everything together and then we got one more piece moving out of seat. Right, I don't have the timeline for when these two are planned to be uh, merged. I have them um, as of July 1st. They're the first ones that I scheduled for consolidation. Actually, I have a lot going forward July 1st as long as we can get the municipal code updates by April. Okay. Um, so if they can exist until July 1st because a lot of people start terming out on June 30th so that's a good date to start merging people without having to cut people they are just naturally dropping off so, so July 1st would be the timeline for me at the soonest unless they need this to be done sooner and then that would be up to you guys what my preference would be is that we just refer this to the work plan that we're gonna see in a couple of weeks and if it looks like it's not gonna fit then we can bring it we could just take council action to enact this. Otherwise, I'd like to keep it all together. Okay. That's fine with us. Okay. Okay. So, by the work plan, you mean the, the 29th council meeting? Yeah, I think that agenda. We just got the if if everything stays and the council doesn't mess with what we just heard, and that it's going to be on that track. I think then we just fold it into that and we say, okay, that's going to be part of it. But if something goes awry at the council meeting and we something gets diverted and then we, can we just bring it back and okay. have it come back to us so okay. that was a motion second on the motion all in favor aye, aye. opposed unopposed that's approved quest to approve the african-american history month flag raising is motion approved. special aye. event second. motion is to approve all in favor aye. Aye. opposed unopposed that's approved Item four is accept the preliminary study session topics for the period of January to June of 13. What I think we ought to do is try to have a priority setting discussion of study sessions on February 11th when we have our priority setting meeting on the budget. Uh, we also have typically in February something to do with ordinances in terms of priority setting, but we set so many priorities in the last time there's probably not any room on the list, but we might want to consider it in February. So what I'd suggest we refer this to staff and figure out if it, we can fit it into this February 11th date, uh, and which I think we can, and then set a time for council members who have something else they think should be considered beyond what staff has recommended to submit it to us, the Rules Committee meeting by January 23rd, we'll give staff a couple of weeks to figure out the workload questions around that for a February 11th meeting. So basically on February 11th, we could set the priorities for study sessions, not pick the dates and not know for sure if we're going to do it, but set the priorities so the staff can figure out, okay, the, if the first one is going to absorb all the time, there won't be any time to do any more, we would know that. Or if they can all be done, we would know that. And if there's three or four or five, you know, we just work through that list of priorities and do that at February 11th. This would be my suggestion. So then that'll be my motion. Second. Yep, that's the motion. On that motion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unopposed? All right. Additions and revi revi revisions to the Committee of Work Plans. We have the Committee Economic Development Committee, Neighborhood Service and Education Committee, Transportation and Environment Committee, Public Safety, Finance and Strategic Support Committee's recommendations from the chairs and myself. So I'm gonna make a motion, but I just wanna ask a question real quick. And 
on the Public Safety Committee that I chair, fortunately we were able to get the um, fire department report on response times into the work plan and we all know that that memo came out in the last uh, couple of days. The question I had for the committee is given that it's already gotten a significant amount of interest out there and we found an error, should we maybe have this set for a couple of times throughout the year, whether it be two, three, or four times within the year just to make sure that we monitor it going forward. And we only put it on once here in January, but I'm sure there's gonna be some sort of follow-up. I don't know, Madison, since you serve there, you have any opinion on that? Yeah, of course. Um, I, I think that's a good idea. I think that simply because it generated a lot of interest lately, um, I would be, um, you know, I would be more comfortable hearing it a couple of times a year rather than just one time. So, so I'm comfortable with that. When is the first time you're going to hear it? So we're going to hear it in January, Which and this soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't know, you know, what we're going to do as a committee there. So um, maybe we could just add it on in June as well, and then that's kind of at the halfway point, and if the committee thinks they need something else and they can take a motion at one of those two meetings. Yes, I think that would work. Is that okay? So my motion then would be to approve all four of the work plans with the addition of duplicating the January item number five on the June agenda as well. Second. All right, we have a motion to approve the four. There was some question we talked about a while back in terms of the <coughs> the schedule for the Public Safety Committee meeting in January. So that's, it's, it's all resolved. It's all been resolved, yes. Any Thank other you. Uh, scheduling problems with holidays or anything else? And we can always fix that so later. All right, we have a motion to approve with that one change on the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed that. Item four items are approved. I think <coughs> what we have left is open forum or nope. I'm sorry, we have a Public Records Act request item. Martha O'Connell. I think she meant for open forum, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Open forum it is then. Okay, in late August, I contacted Sarah and asked her if it's true that boards and commissions are supposed to be nonpartisan, which I knew they were, and she confirmed indeed it was. Uh, I've had a troubling experience for many years with the housing commissions. The latest example uh, uh, is the Advisory Commission on Rents, and they're now falsifying the minutes, which is why I gave you a word-for-word -word transcript of what I said. And at the bottom, you can see they concocted something that I never even said. I walked into the meeting to hear them celebrating the re-election of Obama. It was peachy keen, America was saved, and they had all been working the phone banks. I protested and said that the commissions were nonpartisan. They ignored me. They continued talking. I protested again, and the gentleman, the man, not gentleman, said, if you don't like it, go stand in the corridor. So under open forum, this is what I told them, that the boards and commissions, any citizen of San Jose should be able to walk into a meeting and feel welcome, and that they can apply for a commission, and they don't have to be a card-carrying member of the Democratic Party. And I'm concerned because this is happening over and over and over again in the housing commissions. For some reason, it's happening in housing. Councilperson Oliverio, I didn't have a clue what political party you were until I looked it up on the internet when I tried to find out why are these people so tied to the Democratic Party, and I found a lot of them are on the Central Committee. I think they need to keep their politics out of the boards and commissions and stop casting a chilling effect on other folks who want to apply. And I'll be turning this transcript in to the Advisory Commission on Rents and asking them to stop falsifying the minutes. Thank you. Anybody else under open forum? Tell the request I had. That's it. We're done. We're adjourned.